Hey guys, welcome back. In the previous video, we implemented a signup functionality in Nest.js. And in this video, we will be implementing a sign-in functionality using Nest.js, GraphQL, Prisma, and Postgres. And I would say, let's get started. Let's go to the auth service. And here we already implemented the sign-up method. Now it's time to implement the sign in method. And this sign in method expects a sign in input. Sign in input, which is of type sign in input. And we haven't created this DTO yet, so let's create it. Let's create a new file in the DTO folder. And let's name it sign in input dot ts. And here I just take the content of sign up input, copy it and paste it in here. And the only difference is here that we do not need a username. So whenever we want to sign in, we just need the email and the password. And of course, we have to name this sign in input. Now we can import it here in our auth.service. All right, and now how does the logic for signing someone in work? Well, first of all, we have to find a user with the email here, right? And if we do not find a user, then of course we cannot sign in a user. So let's say const user is equal to await this dot prisma dot user dot find unique and then parentheses curly brackets and here we have to provide where again and then colon curly brackets and now here we want to find a user with a specific email because we are providing the email and the password whenever we want to log in or to sign in. And now you can see that we have two errors. The first being that we haven't marked this function as async. And the second error we get is because we are using find unique. And this expects a unique column. And in this case, email is not unique. So let's go back to our schema.prisma file in the Prisma folder here. And here you can see that the email is not unique. So what we have to do here is we have to provide at unique like this. And what you can see here now is that the error is still here. And the next thing we have to do is every time we change this schema.prisma file, we have to run a command called npx prisma generate and this will update the prisma client now you can see that the error is still here and this is i think a little bit buggy usually this error goes away whenever you restart visual studio code what you can also do is you can go to your node modules look for prisma here dot prisma and then you just open up the index dot d dot ts file like this you just click on it and now you see the error is gone now let's go to our auth resolver and here you see we have to change something we have to make it a mutation because we are changing the state of the server whenever we do this we have to make a mutation not a query because we do not want to get data, but we want to update the database. Remember, whenever we sign in, we update the hashed refresh token in our Postgres database. And we can only do this via mutation. So this must be a mutation. And then here we name this method sign in like this. Then we can delete all this here in the mutation decorator. And as response, we can say sign response again. Yeah, so basically 
we want to return our two access tokens and then our user. And then we can grab all the arguments from the sign up mutation here. And we can paste it in sign in here down below. And we just have to name this sign in input and also name this sign in input. And here we have to provide a capital letter sign in input like this. And then here down below, we return this dot auth service dot sign in and we paste in the sign in input like this. Here, of course, we have to import sign in input. And now we should be good to go. Let's test it. Make sure that your Nest.js application is running, that you have no errors here. Make sure that your Docker container is running. Now let's go to our playground here. And you see here, I have a sign up um, tab that was from the previous video. And you can make a new tab here. I've already created one. And here you see our sign in mutation. Again, this name here doesn't matter, but I named it sign in. And the convention is to provide a capital letter here. Then again, here we have our input. This is our variable. We always have to provide a dollar sign here so that we can down below here under query variables, we can um, reference our input variable like this. And then we can provide all the properties that we need and we can see sign and we can see that the input variable must be of type sign in input. And going to our schema here, we can see that our sign in input needs to have an email and a password. And then again, this name here doesn't matter, but this name matters, right? This is the name of our mutation. And in this case, it is named sign in. And it expects an argument with the key of sign in input, which is this. And then we provide the values here. And then we return the access token, the refresh token and a user object. But in this case, we do not uh, return the whole user, but just the username. Now let's hit play. And here we get this error because I totally forgot to keep implementing the logic in our auth service, right? In our sign in message here. We were just looking for a user with a specific email, but then we didn't do anything with it. So let's keep going. The next thing we can do here is if we do not have a user, then we can throw an exception and we throw a forbidden exception and we just say access denied like this. If we pass this if statement, it means we have a user. And now we can compare the passwords, meaning the hashed password from the database and the password from the sign in input. Let's say const do passwords match. And then we say this is equal to await argon.verify. We pass in the password from our database user.hash password and then also the password from the sign in input here. And then again, if the passwords do not match, we throw another forbidden exception here with the text of access denied. For the case that the passwords do match, we can create a new access and refresh token via this create tokens method here. We pass in the user ID as argument and the user email. And after getting the refresh token, we can update it in our database via update refresh token method here. And again, we provide the user ID and the refresh token as argument. And finally, we can return the access token, the refresh token, and the user. Now let's go back to our playground. 
And let's try again. And what you can see here now is that it worked. Nice. Now let's try to work with something that does not exist. I just put a 1 here, for example. Let's hit play. And now we are getting an error. Okay, this is a validation that works. So I can't put the 1 here, but I can put it in here, for example. Let's try again to sign in. And now we get yeah, forbidden. And this is because on the server side, we cannot find a user with this email. And because we cannot find a user, we throw this forbidden exception here, right? We are looking for a user with a specific ID. And if we do not find one, then we throw this forbidden exception. And if we have a user, then we compare the passwords, meaning the password from the database with the password from the sign in input. And if they match, then we issue new tokens and we update the refresh token in our database and then we return the tokens and the user to the client. So what we can do now is we can grab this email here, go to sign up, paste it in here. And now let's try to sign up. All right, this worked. Now let's go back to sign in. And now let's try to sign in. And yeah, it worked because we created a user with this email via sign up mutation. All right, guys, that's it. In this video, we implemented a simple sign in feature using Nest.js, GraphQL, Prisma and Postgres. In the next videos, we will be implementing a logout feature. And then also we will implement authorization using Passport.js. And we will also make use of strategies and guards. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.